welcome to True Projects. In this video, we are going to explain about the project, which is MCAD, a machine learning based cyber attacks detector in software defined networking for healthcare systems. Introduction of the project The healthcare sector manages critical patient data that demands stringent protection against unauthorized access and cyber threats due to its high sensitivity. Inadequate security measures can result in devastating breaches. Traditional security methods frequently prove insufficient in providing comprehensive protection for healthcare systems, leaving vulnerabilities to exploitation. Such vulnerabilities may lead to data breaches and compromise patient confidentiality. To overcome these challenges, the project centers on healthcare systems with a core objective to develop a robust and highly effective solution for bolstering cybersecurity. Our aim is to bridge the security gap that exists in the healthcare sector. To address these concerns, our project introduces the concept of machine learning based cyber attack detector specifically designed to meet the unique security needs of healthcare systems. This innovative approach leverages advanced technology to proactively identify and mitigate cyber threats. Objective of the project The primary objective of this project is to propose a machine learning based cyber attack detector specifically designed for healthcare systems. Our overarching goal is to enhance the security of healthcare applications by effectively mitigating the impact of cyber attacks. Additionally, we aim to provide a proactive defense against potential threats. With the broader goal, the project places a specific focus on the detection and mitigation of distributed denial of service, which is DDoS attacks within healthcare systems. By addressing this specific threat, we aim to safeguard the continuous availability of healthcare services a critical aspect of patient care to achieve our objectives we intend to harness the power of various machine learning algorithms these algorithms include knn decision tree random forest naive base logistic regression adaboost and exeboost by employing a range of machine learning algorithms we aim to provide a diverse and robust set of tools for the accurate prediction and prevention of cyber threats to implement this project we need hardware and software requirements coming to hardware requirements we need operating system of windows processor of 5 5 and above ram of 8 gb and above and hard disk of 25 gb and above coming to software requirements we need anaconda 3 and visual studio community work to execute the project we have designed various steps in the flow of work the first step is importing the packages in this step we import necessary python libraries and packages that are required for the project we have imported NumPy for numerical operations, Pandas for data manipulation, Matplotlib and Seaborn for visualizations, and Scikit-learn for machine learning. Exploring the dataset. Here we explore the MCAD SDN dataset, which contains relevant information about network traffic, cyber threats, and other attributes. It involves gaining an understanding of the dataset structure, size, and content. Data processing. This step involves preparing the dataset for analysis. Pandas data frame. Here we use Pandas library to create a structured data frame from the data set. This step involves importing the data, handling missing values and organizing it into rows and columns for easy manipulation. Drop unwanted columns. Not all columns in the data set may be relevant for the analysis. So here we identify and remove columns that do not contribute to the objectives of the project, streamlining the data set for further analysis. Visualization using Seaborn and Matplotlib. Visualization is a crucial for gaining insights from the data. Here we use libraries like Seaborn and Matplotlib to create graphical representations of the data set such as histograms, scatter plots and heat maps. Label encoding using label encoder. If the data set includes categorical variables, we have to use label encoder to convert them into numerical format, making it suitable for machine learning algorithms that require numerical input. Feature selection. In this step, we choose Features from the dataset which are most relevant for the machine learning models. Feature selection helps in improving model accuracy and the efficiency. Splitting the data X and Y for machine learning. Here we split the dataset into two parts X features and Y target variable. X contains the input feature used for predictions and Y contains the target variable which we aim to predict. Building the model. Here we developed various machine learning models including KNN, Decision Tree, Random Forest, Naive Base, Logistic Regression, Adaboost and Exeboost. 
coming to KNN, which is KNRS neighbor. It is used to classify data points based on their similarity to nearby data points. In this project, KNN will help in identifying network traffic patterns that resemble known cyber attacks. Decision tree. Decision tree is employed for classification tasks that they create a tree-like structure to make decisions based on input features. In this context, decision trees can help determining if network traffic exhibits patterns indicative of cyber threats. Random Forest It is an ensemble method that combines multiple decision trees to improve classification accuracy. It is useful for detecting complex patterns in network data. Naive Base It is a probabilistic classification algorithm that assumes independence among features. It can be effective in detecting cyber threats by considering the likelihood of observing specific patterns. Logistic Regression It is a binary classification algorithm employed in this project to discern whether network traffic patterns indicate potential cyber threats or benign activity, making it valuable for risk assessment and decision making. Its simplicity and the interpretable nature of its output make it suitable choice for distinguishing between normal and abnormal network traffic in healthcare systems. Ada Boost It is an ensemble technique that combines weak classifiers into strong ones. It is employed here to enhance the model's ability to enhance and identify and classify cyber threats accurately by aggregating multiple weaker models. Exeboost It is another ensemble method known for its predictive performance. It is used to handle imbalanced data, improve accuracy, and increase the overall robustness of the model, particularly in detecting subtle patterns in network traffic. Training the model The machine learning models are trained on the trained data to learn patterns and the relationships within the data set. As an extension, we applied an ensemble method combining the predictions of multiple individual models to produce a more robust and accurate prediction. We built front-end using Flask framework for user testing with user authentication. Flask framework with SQLite for sign-up and sign-in. Here we implement a Flask-based web application that includes functionalities for user registration and authentication using SQLite for user management and data storage. User gives input as feature values. User provide input in the form of feature values. These input values are used to make predictions regarding cyber threats. The given input is pre-processed for prediction. The user provided input is provided and processed to ensure it aligns with the format expected by the machine learning models. This includes encoding categorical data if necessary. Train model is used for prediction. The pre-processed user input is then fed into the trained machine learning models to make predictions about the presence or likelihood of cyber threats. Final outcome is displayed through frontend. The predictions generated by the models are presented to the user through the front-end interface. Users can view the results which may include information about potential cyber threats detected in the input data. Accuracy Comparison Graph This is the horizontal bar graph where y-axis represents algorithm names and x-axis represents accuracy scores of that particular algorithm. Accuracy is a measure of the overall correctness of a classification model. It calculates the ratio of correctly predicted instances, which are both true positives and true negatives, to the total number of instances. Precision Comparison Graph Here, y-axis represents algorithm names and x-axis represents precision score. Precision is a metric that assesses the accuracy of positive predictions made by the model. It calculates the ratio of true positives which are correctly predicted positive instances to the total number of positive predictions which are true positives plus false positives. Recall Comparison Graph Here, y-axis represents algorithm names and x-axis represents recall scores of the particular algorithm. Recall is also known as sensitivity or true positive rate. It measures the model's ability to correctly identify all relevant instances in the dataset. It calculates the ratio of true positives to the total number of actual positive instances, which are true positive plus false negatives. F-score comparison graph. Here, y-axis represents algorithm names and x-axis represents f-score of that particular algorithm. F-score is the harmonic mean of the precession and recall. It is a balanced measure that considers both false positives and false negatives. It is calculated as two times the product of precession and recall divided by the sum of precession and recall. 
It provides a single metric that balances precision and recall, making it useful when we want to consider both false positives and false negatives in the evaluation. For execution of the project, first we need to open the code folder. This is the code folder of the project. This is the static folder. It contains files related to CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap files. This is the templates folder. It contains all pages, all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc. which represents various pages of the website. This is the app.py. This .py file contains information related to front-end logic. It includes code written in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database and generating dynamic content that to be rendered in the HTML templates. This is a model file. It contains algorithm information and that will be loaded into project code during runtime. This is the notebook.ipynb file. This is a Jupyter notebook file which contains a combination of code, graphs and outputs all in one place. It allows users to write and execute code in individual cells and making it popular choice for the data science. This is signup.db file. This file is a database file used to store the user information. Now we need to copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer. So we'll copy this path. We'll copy this path and open the anaconda prompt. Using the cd command followed by the space, we need to paste the copied path and then click on enter. This command will change the current directory to the code folders path. So here we can see that current directory is changed to the code folders path. So here we need to enter the command which is python space app.py and then click on enter. This will compile app.py file and this command will execute the python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address which is localhost and the port. Now we need to copy this local link provided by the Flask framework and paste it in any browser. So I am copying this link. I prefer Google Chrome so I will paste it in that. So here we need to paste the link and click on enter. This is the web page of the project which is displayed in the browser. And this web page is built by using the Flask framework. So here first we need to click on sign up and enter all the sign up details if you are signing up newly. I have already signed up so I will directly click on sign in. Here we need to provide our credentials which are the username and the password. And now we need to click on sign in. We have signed in successfully. So here we can see that we need to enter all the parameters and then click on predict. Then the system will predict whether attack is detected or not. If the attack is detected, it will detect which type of attack it is. Now let us understand the parameters. This is IP bytes. This parameter represents the total number of bytes in IP packets. It measures the amount of data transmitted in IP packets, providing insights into network traffic volume. This is IP packet. It denotes the total count of IP packets transmitted. It represents the number of individual packets exchanged over the network, indicating the frequency of data transmission. This is port bytes. It indicates the total number of bytes transmitted through specific network ports. It focuses on the volume of data exchanged through particular ports, allowing analysis of traffic patterns. This is port packet. It represents the total count of packets transmitted through specific network of ports. It quantifies the number of individual packets transmitted via particular ports, giving a detailed view of network communication. This is port flow count. It signifies the number of unique communication flows handled by specific network ports. It provides insights into how many distinct connections are established through particular port. Table active count. It refers to the count of active entries in a network table. Active entries indicate current, ongoing communications, offering real-time information about network connections. Port Rx Packets It represents the count of received packets on specific ports. It specially measures the number of packets received by a port, allowing analysis of incoming data traffic. Port Rx Bytes It indicates the total number of bytes received on specific ports. It measures the volume of incoming data transmitted through particular ports, aiding in understanding the inbound data flow. 
four TX bytes. It represents the total number of bytes transmitted from a specific port. It measures the volume of outgoing data sent via a particular port, providing insights into outbound data traffic. Now let us enter all these parameters. I entered all the parameters and now we will click on predict. It is predicted that there is an attack detected and the attack type is brute force. Now we will enter other details. I have entered all the required parameter information and now I'll click on predict. It is predicted that there is an attack detected and attack type is CMD. Now we will enter all the other parameters. So I have entered details here and now I'll click on predict. So it is predicted that there is an attack detected and the attack type is SQL injection. Now we will give other details. I have entered the information here and now I will click on predict. So it is predicted that there is an attack detected and attack type is UDP DDoS. Now we will give other details. I have entered all the parameter details and now I will click on predict. So it is predicted based on parameters that there is an attack detected and the attack type is SMABA. Now we will give other parameter details and see what will be predicted. I have entered all the parameter details and now I will click on predict. It is predicted that there is an attack detected and the attack type is BNC. Like these attacks, we also have three more attacks. If we enter other parameter details, we will get all those three attacks also. Now we will get back to the home page. By using this, we can understand that using the collected parameters, we can effectively detect potential cyber attacks by analyzing network traffic patterns and identifying attacks within the data. Conclusion of the project The project has successfully engineered a robust cyber attack detection system, leveraging the power of machine learning techniques contributing to enhance cyber security. We conducted an in-depth exploration of the MCAD SDN dataset undertaking essential data, pre-processing tasks such as feature selection and encoding, ensuring the dataset's readiness for analysis. In our quest of an effective cyber attack detection solution, we rigorously assessed various machine learning models including ensemble methods to measure their accuracy and suitability for detecting cyber attacks. Out of all the available models, we opted extension ensemble model for the prediction due to its exceptional accuracy and F-score which greatly enhanced the effectiveness of the healthcare systems. This project marks a significant step forward in bolstering cyber security measures and defending against evolving threats in the digital landscape. Thank you for watching video. For more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.